Hello YouTube, this is DeSode here. Uh, getting ready to start what I think is going to be a truly, truly awesome build. But I'm also going to say this is going to push me to the absolute brink of my soldering skills. Um, this right here is something that just came out. And I'm a huge, huge fan of this kind of thing because I think it's going to push this whole new brushless tiny whoop scene to another level. This is the Tomo Quads Tiny Swift. This is a 59 millimeter frame brushless. And we're going to try and document this build as best I can. I'm not going to show myself pulling my hair out because the soldering, the level of soldering skill on this is just going to be absolutely ridiculous. And I imagine there are times where I am going to have to step back and go have a smoke because it's going to be very stressful. So definitely not a build for a beginner. Um, anyhow, here's the frame right here. Just to give you a size reference, I'm going to show you here that, you know, this is my tiny whoop. You can kind of see, here, let me lift this up, and how exactly small this frame is. It's small, small. So for brushless, this is just going to be absolutely awesome. What we're going to do is, uh, let's go through the parts. You got the... Uh, the kit, which has you know, all your standoffs, um, the camera holder, which he just added in there. And then he also, Tomo Quads, greatly, very nicely added in two different prop cutters. And this one is so you can connect your fingernail clippers. And then this one, you can set the prop in there and then trim. Uh, we're going to be using 40 millimeter, possibly 41 millimeter prop size is what we're going to use. For props, I'm going to go with the Furious FPV 2035s, which these will be trimmed down. Those were recommended with the build. For motors, I went with the Flex RC 1103 10,000 kV. One thing I liked about these instead of the Race Star is they do have, let me open this and show you real quick. They do have, let's see that, get the camera to focus. They have mounting holes for the props. The FEM2 F3 flight controller from Emacs. Very, very small board. Um, they use JST. This is a 2S build, by the way. And then also for the ESC, I went with uh, the Flex RC. Has a FXA six and one ESC. Go ahead and show you a little quick view of that. The camera to focus. There we go. So that's what we're going to use for the ESC. The first thing I'm doing here is getting the ESC ready, and I'm going to go ahead and tin all of my points, and I'm going to. I've already connected the the JST connector. And then I connected two wires to the po positive and negative. They're going to run up to the uh, to the flight controller. I'm going to take this bottom piece, which is right there, and you're going to put your bolts up through there, and you're going to put on your first standoff. And you will notice that the shape of it, there's this gap right here. So that's where that's showing you how you're going to put this on there. We're going to take so that your power wire is lined up with that gap. We're going to put it right down through there. And these are your sides. See these little two angle pieces. So this is going to be your front end. This is going to be your tail. Now the next step, after you got your bottom little plate on there, your standoff, your ESC, you got your ESC all ready to go. You're going to take your next standoff and you're going to put that on top of there. Now the easiest way to uh, start your motors and getting them started is to just take one of the screws. Um, with my motor, I came with two different size screws. I found the right one that matches the thickness of the carbon fiber and then sits flush at the top because you want to make sure that 
whatever screw you're using on uh, your motor doesn't come out high enough to hit the motor and, and damage it when it's spinning. Anyhow, if you start that screw right there and then take your plate, bring it through the center, and then you can just slide it right up into place. I made use of that little tiny rubber thing, rubber strap almost between the two standoffs to hold down the wires, which really makes it nice. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to put on the, the motors on top of here. And you'll notice on this also that there is also a gap. So you can see this is gonna be your front. This is gonna be your rear back here. And if you remember correctly, these two markings on either side, the little curves are going to be the side. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and get right on top of there as we feed the wires up through. Here's another little tip that I did. I took the center wire and ran it through this each for each motor through the tip, a little hole on the tip there, as you can see. And then I just wrapped the right and left wires around so that they'd hold underneath the motor and stay out of the way until I flipped it over. That way I can undo them each one as I'm soldering on the ESCs and I'm good to go. With this board, with the FEM2, we're gonna be changing the orientation. The orientation sits, and I don't know, see if you can see that you can see the little arrow there that's facing forward and we're going to change the orientation in beta flight when we get to it but it also creates a situation that you need to be aware of the reason we're going to change the orientation is because we want the micro usb port to be coming out the back of the quad and we're also going to cut the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to put the nut on this final bolt here in the back which we don't use it from the rest of the build up from there and then I'm going to cut it off with a Dremel tool. And then I'm going to take the board and I'm going to turn it around so that, like I said, the USB is in the back. Now, what that does is we're going to change the orientation. You need to make note of that because depending on how you hook up the ESCs, I went for the least amount of wire possible because this is such a small build. I really wanted to keep the weight down. And so when I connected the motors to the ESC, they're not connected motor one to one on the ESC. They're connected to a different route. And what I had to do is I had to write down on, on a pen and paper which signal wire was going to be coming from which motor. And then, since I'm going to turn the flight controller board, you need to make note that the pads, the signal pads for the ESC on the flight controller are not going to change. And the reason this is important is when I ran my signal wires, I wanted them to be in the position so that with the flight controller turned and the USB in the back of the quad design, the signal wires were already laid out and ready to go to connect to where they need to be on the board, even though it's turned. I just want to add, make sure to use the foam tape pad, the foam pad that came with the FEM2 F3 flight controller. Tomo has mentioned on a couple of different occasions and also in the kit that this board is very sensitive to vibrations. So make sure you use that to mount the flight controller. So now that you got all your soldering done, we're going to take the final standoff. This goes on there upside down. Kind of make sure that all your wires are tucked the correct way. on just like that. Now that you got your board all soldered up and ready to go, you can go ahead and put these arms on. These are the arms that come up to the uh, prop guard. And then you want to take these two pieces right here, but the first thing you want to do before you screw those together is you want to feed your wires for your receiver and your camera up through there and then up into here and then screw that together and then this just sits down on top of your on top of there on top of the three 
and then you can go ahead and put your nuts on. Now that you've got your wires all fed up through there and there's no screws in there yet, your plate on, all your wires that you need coming up through, then you're going to go ahead and take these little tiny silver screws, which are the only two silver silver screws in the packet, and they have an Allen wrench head on them, and you're going to use those because they're longer and they're designed to be a little bit longer to strengthen as they go through both the camera mount, the prop guard, and then down into the, uh, the top plastic mounting piece, for lack of a better word. Okay, now that you got your camera on there, and one, one little tip that I did, this is so small that uh, dealing with a little bit of vibrations on this. So for me, and it's dependent upon each different camera you use, I use the um, a new camera that I just found, which I have a review for it on our on my channel here. This is the Woof Whoop WT05, and one thing I loved about it is it's got the race band, 48 channels, 3.3 to 5. You can check it out right up here in the corner there. Click on that, and that'll take it to you. But this is a 3 gram. A AIO all in one and uh, really really great little cam so check that that review of it out you'll like it but one thing that I did do I'll point out I took a little piece of foam I modified this mount so that it wasn't tightly holding the camera because I didn't want any of the vibration from the, the frame to get to the camera so I loosened this up and then I had a piece of double-sided foam tape and I put that underneath of it just to kind of cushion it so that it has a little bit of play to it to help with the vibrations. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is the last and final two things. We're going to take our screws and we're going to put them in the arms going up to the prop guard. And one thing I will say is make sure you hold with two fingers on either side of that. It's a small little piece. It gets very sturdy once you get all four of them uh, screwed in. But make sure you hold very tightly on either side of it as you put the screw in. And now we're pretty much done, other than the props and your receiver. I'm going with uh, one of my old favorites. That's a good standby, is the uh, Lemon Satellite DSMX receiver. Take it out of the case. It's, I believe, 2.2 grams or 2 grams, somewhere around in there. So a decently light little receiver. And I'm going to plug it in and mount it right on the back there with some double-sided foam tape. And then put the props on. We are ready to rock and roll. Okay, guys, let's go ahead and take a, a, a little gander here at the weight on the good old Digi scales. And this is without no battery. Currently where I'm sitting with my build. It's at 46 grams. Okay, so we've got our props on there, and we are ready to go. Uh, I wanted to show you guys one little thing real quick. Tomo included this in the kit. There's two different devices for trimming props. I really like this one. It has a little tiny lid on it and I'm using Furious FPV 2035 props and trimming them down to 40 millimeter. So you just pop it in there, put your lid on there. It's perfectly curved in a circle that fits the edge of some gigantic toenail clippers. You can just go right across and trim it. It works really, really well. Cool little thing for him to include in the kit. Also, I will add that there is another different mount, so if you want to use like an Asian style mount from a tiny whoop, you can put this on there and put that across and use that also. Um, one other thing real quick is if you guys are not members of the Tomo Quads Hangout and you are on Facebook, I recommend that you go check it out. Great bunch of guys over there. Tom is off on there off and on, uh, giving all kinds of cool information and what's coming up with the next build with Tomo Quads. So that's a great place to go check it out. All you got to do is apply, and then they'll accept you in there, and you can get in the group and, and meet a great bunch of people that are fans of Tomo Quads. I will also add on there, there's a guy, a gentleman, I'm not going to say his name, but he had one of the, I believe, prototypes of this, so he had it for a while before any of the rest of us, the lucky guy. But he did add that it greatly helps to reverse your props with this. And if you don't know what that means, it's very simple. You go into BHL Heli, BLH Heli, and you take your motors, which would be um, 
counterclockwise and counterclockwise and clockwise and clockwise, and you reverse those. And once you reverse the rotation so that counterclockwise on these two would say be clockwise and vice versa on the other two, then you switch your props. One thing that does is it blows the air outside of the frame so that when you're in a turn, it holds the turn a lot better and it doesn't want have a tendency to drop down because it's blowing air out the side. So that's very important and I really appreciate Mr. T giving us that advice. Okay guys, let's move on and uh, we'll show some flight footage and I hope everybody out there, I hope that this was able to help you guys put together your tiny Swift. If you like the channel, please subscribe. I appreciate all the likes, any comments. If you need any help, I will do my best to help you guys. All right, have a good one. Just sewed out.